Hey everyone, just wanted to let you know, after Amanda and I finish talking about Night of the Comet, we get into Scream 6 for a little bit, so if you'd like to check that out, or if you'd like to avoid it, uh, that starts right around, in between about an hour, eight, hour, nine minutes. So, enjoy. Hello, hello. Welcome to Rotten Horror Picture Show, the horror movie podcast where we talk about films off the Rotten Tomatoes 200 best movies of all time list. My name is Clay and with me as always is Amanda. How are you doing, Amanda? I'm good. I'm back from my uh, my mall shopping spree where I didn't pay for anything. Yes. And I'm looking fabulous. Yes. Well, I mean, the malls of this movie <laughs> are similar to the malls of today. Eerily similar yeah. to the malls of today in that they <laughs> are filled with nothing but <laughs> ruffians. Yes. And you can just walk in and... Put, Take whatever you want and walk out. Put your gun down among the shoes. Yeah, while you try on some pumps. Yes. And yeah. then just, you know, disappear in yeah. a cloud of red dust. <laughs> uh, today we are talking about Night of the Comet from 1984. It's number 183 on our list. It has a 79% Rotten Tomato score with a 58% audience score. That's surprising. Huh. I feel like this is a, a fairly well-regarded cult movie. Mm. So 58, I, although I don't know, I feel like, I, I don't know if Rotten Tomatoes is anything like IMDb, Yeah, but I feel like if you're, if you're looking at a, if you're looking up a cult movie, mm-hmm. horror movie, mm-hmm. and you've got like a 58% to a 65%, yes. it's probably going to be pretty good. It, it seems yeah. bad, but like you go on IMDb and it's like, oh, this has like a 5.8 or 5.9. Yeah. There's a good chance that it's going to actually be pretty good. Yeah. And that a lot of the people who are... Maybe didn't realize what they were choosing yeah. to watch on a random Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, they're all squares. They don't, they don't know. <laughs> they're all squares. Uh, had you seen this before? No, I knew nothing about this one. This was one that I have been wanting to watch for a long time. Uh, it's a, a favorite of, of my friend Joe. Mm. And uh, he every time he brings it up, I just my, my eyes go cross-eyed, <laughs> and so now we can finally talk to each other. Now you guys can be real friends. Yes. He, I drive with him in the car. He he mm. drives me places when we go on. <laughs> he's my chauffeur. I was gonna say, and he just won't shut up about this movie. Yeah, I, just I didn't go, know yeah, you yeah, lived yeah, such yeah, a yeah. such a life of luxury. Yeah. Well, I can finally pay him back by understanding what he's talking about now. Um. Yeah, I uh, this was kind of hard to find. This has been notoriously hard to find. I I feel mm. like because even streaming it now, I was a hundred percent sure, ninety ninety nine percent sure that this was readily available on Shutter. It was available somewhere as of like very like very three recently. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 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 <clears throat> end of February or something. To the point where there. when it popped up, yeah. I thought, oh great. This yeah. is. I just saw that this was streaming on Shutter or whatever. Right. And I guess between when we said yeah. we were going to do it next and when we recorded this episode, disappeared. I guess it's gone. Yeah. Anyway, so like we had dust to, in the wind, Clay. It was. <laughs> it was available on Tubi. Um, yeah, a couple, if, a couple of those free, free with ads streaming services like Roku mm-hmm. and, and Pluto TV and it's stuff also like that. if you're more inclined to piracy. Mm. If it can, I guess it counts. It's on YouTube. You yeah. can find it on YouTube. <laughs> a pretty good print of it too. A print. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's like is, a. Is it a print that someone would so good someone would go down on you for it? I probably, <laughs> but it's yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a good quality. It seems to be like an HD rep or something. So it's yeah. it's worth watching on there if you can. <clears throat> I think uh, Scream Factory put it out on Blu-ray, so you can oh. you can buy the hard copy, but it's 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 difficult to stream. Anyway, uh, we're gonna play the trailer for you. And we'll be right back to talk about Night of the Comet. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to be one of the last people on Earth? We're talking ghost town! Who would you see? There's nobody. I mean, there's nobody. Ah! What would you do? 
Hey, I'm sorry if the end of the world makes me a little nervous. Where would you go? The stars are up ahead! Well, get ready to find out, because the comet is coming into your orbit. The legal drinking age is now 10, but... You will need ID. Let's be real. It's the night of the comet. What do you give me if I come back? Texas. Night of the Comet. I'll be taking requests from all you teenage comet zombies. The night the teenagers ruled the world. Yeah! Night of the Comet. The garden of civilization is on us. Fitching, isn't it? Okay, Night of the Comet, 1984, directed, written and directed by Tom Eberhardt, and starring, this is this is a good one, because this is starring entirely, I can do the entire thing of people oh. from other stuff. Uh, Gwen from Weekend at Bernie's, 80s Scream Queen <laughs> Kelly Maroney from such movies as Chopping Mall. <gasps> yes, that's and, right. And uh, there's another big one that I can't remember. Uh, Mike Ryerson from the Salem's Lot TV movie and a billion other TV shows. Oh, wow. He's the one, like the, the farmer guy with yeah, the yeah, yeah. creepy eyes and the rocking chair. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Omen from House of the Devil. And in a big Penske file crossover, this is mm. very, very relevant and can, oh. and uh, up to date with what we're doing currently. Oh. Commander Chakotay from Star Trek Voyager. Ah. As Hector Gomez. A rare Penske file crossover. Yeah, it doesn't happen as often as I th- I, I thought it no. would. Because Star Trek is one of those shows where it's been on so long, like everybody's been on it, you'd think. But not but in horror movies, I guess. I guess not. Amanda, what happens in Night of the Comet? After a rare comet sighting, teen sisters Regina and Samantha find that they're among the only survivors of a zombie attack. The girls partner with another survivor, Hector, but as they try to avoid the zombies, they're sought out by scientists who want to experiment on their bodies in the hope of finding an antidote. Dodging both doctors and the undead, they keep moving in the hope that they can continue to stay alive. Yes. Ish. Ish. Yeah. I don't know if I would... Classify this as a zombie attack? Yeah. Yeah. It's got zombie elements... Yeah, yeah. But it seems to be something that's different than that. Well, Clay, I can tell you things that you'll find in this movie. Yes, please. What they include. Mm-hmm. Sex in uncomfortable places. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the two the two sex scenes or uh, or times they talk about it. One is in the uh, the trailer of a of a semi. Yes. Which seems very I uncomfortable. I feel like that's the number one uncomfortable one. Yeah, because that's going to be like pitch black dark too. And cold or maybe like splinters on the floor. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know what else? You don't know what's on the on the floor of those right, things. Like what is? What have you been hauling? Yeah. Ooh. Old milk. <laughs> Why? Why would anyone haul old milk? You, someone's got to throw it out. And the other sex and uncomfortable place is... The floor of a projection booth at the movie theater. Yes. Yes. Both not the most romantic. No, but both encased in solid steel. Uh, And that's all you need in this movie. Yes. Uh, You'll also find, quote unquote, teenage comet zombies. Great. The greatest Misfits song never recorded. Yes. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't because... I wonder if there's some... Maybe not Misfits, but like someone out there. Because the Misfits made have a good punk song of Teenage Comet Zombies. Teenagers from Mars. Mm. But that's I'm surprised that they didn't do this because that seems right up their alley. Uh, you'll also find Clay's favorite movie gun, mm-hmm. the Mac-10. The Mac-10. It's my favorite movie. Well, second favorite movie gun oh. behind the RoboCop gun. But that has just yeah. that has such limited usage. That's also in only RoboCop. I was gonna say that also only exists in RoboCop. Yes, but yeah. the Mac Ten is my favorite. Uh, specifically, I feel like it, its heyday was the '80s. Oh yeah, it was used a lot in uh, Miami Vice. It's it's, it's of a course. favorite of cocaine traffickers, and it's the probably the most impractical weapon ever created. I like that one of the sisters in this movie even says, "Dad would have gotten us Uzis." Yes, which is <laughs> another one of my favorite '80s. The Uzi, the Uzi doesn't get enough play anymore. Guns have been no. so advanced now. I mean. People are also using them a lot in real life in less fun ways. Yeah, not the Uzi though. Not the Uzi. No, like you illegal. could you could identify a bad guy in real life or in yeah. movies if they show up with an Uzi. Yes. Great gun. 
Uh, you'll also find casual 80s racism, casual 80s homophobia. Just a, a little bit. Yeah. Just a smidge. That's why it's casual. Yeah. It's not like, you know, punching brown people in the face, but it's mm-hmm. definitely telling them that, you know, date night in the barrio requires your your pistol. Yeah. Yeah. That was a pretty funny exchange, though. The way his response. I do like that he was like. He was like date night in the (laughs) bar. A think tank full of mansplainers. Yeah, I mean, and one lady who seems to know what's going on. But but every single other scientist is just like, well, Audrey, let me tell you. This is true. Well, let's use some deductive reasoning here, Audrey. Mm -hmm. And it made me want to punch every single one of them. Yep. And lastly, pretty solid parenting. Not bad for. Doris, who I'm going to exclude because she's a stepmom. Yes. A, 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 and those don't count. A mostly unwilling. No, those are not real parents, is only, what you're saying. Only if they want to be. And she clearly does not. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, there's there's the one of the, the little the kids at the end, towards the end there, says, uh, my, my parents told me to never, never breathe anything yes. from strangers. Very funny line. <laughs> And also uh, their father, the two main characters, their father seems yes. to be like running black ops into <laughs> into Nicaragua or I something. No, I know. And there was like mentions of like Honduras or something. I think like, their father might be Francis Hummel from The Rock. <laughs> yes. Which yes. is going to make my friend Joe like this movie a lot less. But <clears throat> um, yeah, he seemed to have imparted quite a bit of survival and uh, self-defense wisdom onto his two girls, which is good. Yeah, I I love the in the in the first altercation in this movie, the first real one, um, where Reggie, our our protagonist, Reggie, right, Reg Reggie Regina, uh, is in the alley and mm-hmm. the zombie corners her, and as he's advancing, she sort of like, look, I've been taught how to protect myself. Please don't do this. I don't want to hurt you. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of movies, that would just be like, oh, she's just kind of shit talking to like stall. And in this, then she immediately like hits hits him with like the flat of her of oh, the yeah. heel of her palm, like right in the nose, yeah. and then kicks him. And I was just like, yeah. oh, okay. I remember. <laughs> I don't know if you had these conversations with your female friends when you were a young child, but uh, I feel like the day when I as a as a child discovered that. Did you know you could kill somebody if you punched them hard enough in the nose and you could drive the bone into their brain would kill them? Please. You don't think I had this conversation with my older brother who was in karate for like well, 20 that's, years? See, that's, that makes sense. <laughs> the older brother conversation. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. He absolutely did the whole like, here are the things that you do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that was like a big threshold crossing as a child was mm. learning that. Never. I don't know. Practically. I can't practically do that to somebody. I don't think it's as easy as it sounds. Probably not. I think you have to get the right angle, the right application of force. Yeah. Like, and then, I think there's more to it. I think usually you just really break someone's nose. And then you go to jail for a bunch of years, uh-huh. like Nicolas Cage in The Rock. So, so I'm no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Con Air, not The Rock. <laughs> <clears throat> or, you know, when somebody attacks you, just uh, stick your fingers up their nose. Yes. There's a great, uh, this is a stupid tangent. There's there's a good SNL skit from years stupid ago. Stupid tangents, the subtitle yeah. to this podcast. All my podcasts. <laughs> um, where it's a it's a it's a cheesy self defense class, mm. and they they're coming in, they're teaching these kids how to in, in high school how to defend against someone with a gun, mm. and they're like, if you see a person and they point a gun at you, and you have a pen, stick your arm out. With the pen, turn it at a right right angle, and then slip the pen behind the trigger of the gun. What? Then they cannot fire on you. It makes, I mean, it would work, but you can't actually do that. I was going to say, but you have to be like a, a sleight of hand magician or yeah. like a ninja. That's to why do those that. guys never get shot. <laughs> I hate this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Mac 10. Okay. It's so it's such We're a cool looking gun. going straight for violence and weapons in this in this discussion. Of it's this. such a cool looking gun, but that thing Is must hold cool like looking? yeah, it's so tiny and it's like I think it's kind of dumb looking. Oh, it's it's great. It's just like two rectangles shoved together. I know it's 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 very easy it's to draw. Extremely eighties. It's very easy to draw. Maybe that's why <laughs> ah, I like it. But it's got see. it's like I they look like they hold like twenty bullets. Maybe they seem like they hold maybe twenty bullets and in this movie. Those things. I mean, you go through that whole clip in like half a second. And it's the barrel's so short, you're not yeah. going to hit anything. Yeah. I mean, usually what happens is you hit other people 
which is, you know, not great. Nope. Nope. Not if you're trying to be precise and only hit one person. Yeah. But it, but it, if you're a movie villain. Yeah. It's very cool. Or if you're a protagonist fighting a big group of movie villains. Yeah. Sure. Shoot them all. On the list of guns to use against zombies, mm. Mac 10, very low on practicality. Yeah. Very high if you want to look cool doing it. Because you can get two of them. Got it. Anyway. Well, even like Sam, who was a very petite teenage girl, Mm -hmm. seemed to have no problem firing it. Yeah. So it's applicable to all sorts of body types, Mm -hmm. all sorts of situations. Mm -hmm. Need to destroy a car, need to kill some mall stock boys. Yeah, you get it. Either way. Yeah. Looks good. Put down among a pair of fashionable (laughs) shoes. Yes. Um, Yeah. So Night of the Comet. Do you remember Mm? when... I can't remember what comet. Was it Halley's Comet? I feel like there was a comet thing in like the mid 90s that everyone was like, the comet's coming. I think it was Halley's Comet. Was it Halley's Comet? Was Was that the one with the Heaven's Gate people? Yes. Yes? Anyway, around the same time. Yeah. Everybody was going nuts over the comet. Right. Everyone thought the comet was going to. Well, I mean. The, the Heaven's Gate people thought the comet was a spaceship that was going to come and take them away. Right. Had yeah. they seen this movie, we don't know. Maybe. They were big They were big Star Trek fans. That's right. They were. <laughs> I do know that is true. Yes. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this, this, is, this is a different sort of... This is kind of like the 80s Dawn of the Dead in a lot of ways. Yeah. Where you've got these um, characters who are perceived to be the last survivors of an apocalypse Mm -hmm. who eventually make their way and hold their hold themselves up inside a mall yeah um kind of kind of it's it's interesting because there's a it's i didn't know what this movie was about Mm. before i watched it Mm -hmm. and i knew it was about an evening yes that involved a comet yes (laughs) uh and so i was i was surprised when they um in the first sequence when they basically wipe everybody off the planet. So I, planet maybe doesn't matter. I think I think so because there's <clears> a <throat> there's a scene early on during the night of the comet mm-hmm. um, where there's like a TV anchor, like a news anchor on on TV, and they keep kind of cutting to to little bits of it at the very beginning, and it's sort of like he's saying like, oh yeah, the 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 people who should be able to view the comet at this t- point are in uh, Newfoundland, mm-hmm. but. Uh, strangely we're not getting any telecommunications right, from there anyway right. comet night yeah and it's like oh okay so this thing is like progressing as it crosses the globe yeah yeah and it's a it's a fun addition to a, a genre that is fairly well worn i think mm-hmm. and adds a pretty nice uh 80s sheen to it <laughs> yes that both dates it but also makes it last as a as a work this is me talking about this like it's yeah <laughs> high you know, art here F- fitzgerald or something yes. um <clears throat> but it's it, it, it's one of those things where it's so it's so rooted in the time that it came out yeah that it it just is sort of locked in amber and yeah. al- always works well it feels like a period piece yes you know almost like, yeah. yeah yeah like the way you know we we have 80 bajillion remakes of like pride and prejudice and jane Eyre and all of these things and it's like Mm -hmm. this feels like it could have been made now as an 80s period piece right it it's so over the top 80s yeah that it feels like it's a retrospective on the 80s but it was made in the middle of it i'm actually kind of surprised that they haven't tried to remake this because if it's the kind of thing where if you were going to remake it would you update it or would you? I mean, I feel like you—it's what I, it almost stops you from doing it because you have two options: you either update it, yeah, and make it in, incredibly uh, rooted in the current time. I feel like if it were the year two thousand and four, that's what they would have done. Yeah, and then we would have had a a, a mid two thousands version of this. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like if it were. 2018 they would have really dug into the 80s of it yeah because like everything was 80s revival like five that's years that's the ago. other option is you just double down on the 80s yeah thing. you stranger things it yeah and at that yeah. point like what's the point because that already exists yeah, it's already anyway it's already perfect the way what did it you is. think of this movie <laughs> i really liked it it yeah. was absolutely ridiculous and really silly and really fun yeah like it was it was just 
an enjoyable nonsense watch mm. like and and I, I i i don't mean nonsense in the in the sense that it didn't have a coherent plot i actually think for as silly as it is it does a pretty good job of lining things up mm. and and sort of having a progression and making some sort of sense it's just such an 80s plot yeah you I know mean, what it's i mean got, like, like it's <laughs> it's it's one of those movies right where it's got like three things mm-hmm. that are plot based right you've got the comet yep you've got um there are some people left who are turning into zombies yep and then you've got the scientists who uh are evil and, yes and then that's it and like yes. and, and the rest of it it's just sort of playing around yeah but it's also <clears throat> playing with a couple different genres in a fun way mm-hmm. um obviously there are like big b movie vibes in this mm-hmm. um that opening monologue over the yes. the space yeah. like sequence where it's like 65 billion years ago mm-hmm. the dinosaurs were killed and this comet came by um so that's fun that it, it's doing the b movie thing it's definitely playing with zombie stuff it's feels like an 80s teen movie too you know mm-hmm. like like mm-hmm. it with the kids running around in the mall and going to the radio station and Samantha's entire character is very like mm-hmm. it was was she in um Fast Times at Ridgemont High? She was. Is that the, the Yes, other that's big the one? other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it, it's sort of messing around with all of those genres and smushing them together in a fun way. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. And it's um I kind of I it 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 kind of tonally reminded me a bit of Zombieland. Cuz Zombieland yes. has a similar kind of vibe where it's like, all right, you've got a couple people who you're following mm-hmm. and you're just going to watch the hijinks. That's when you were talking about if they ever if they had remade this, I was mm-hmm. thinking they kind of did, yeah. but they just made Zombieland. Yeah, that's they stripped the out the comet yeah. aspect of it and made it less 80s and just had them killing more traditional zombies. Yeah. How did what did you think about the about the the comet thing where the the dusting of everybody and 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 I so yeah. I was I didn't find it confusing, but it was the kind of thing where I was like surprised that it had layers to it where it's yes. like okay, so the way it works is yes. The comet came over. Uh-huh. Everybody who was exposed directly to the comet yes. got turned into dust apparently immediately. Yes. Everybody who was partially protected from the comet mm-hmm. turns into dust but a lot slower and part of that progression is you turn into a zombie first. Yes. I think. Yeah, but but even before that it's like um memory loss kind of brain right. function issues you start to sort of degrade in that sense some people get a rash is that what i was supposed to understand uh everything with sam? i guess because that was one of the reasons that they thought sam was a zombie right which is weird because no one else really gets a rash but maybe yeah. that's well what, they've only you know. seen like eight people so. that's true and maybe yeah. maybe the rash is like then you just start scratching your skin off because you're a zombie now yeah um yeah and then you're a zombie and then apparently you're dust yeah in some amount of hours. Yeah, and and uh, Day, days slash hours. And there's and the other end of this is that if you are protected completely, of which apparently you need to be inside a steel structure. Yes, such as a lawn care shed. A lawn care shed. <laughs> Although apparently, I don't know. They they seem to think that it still got to her, even though. But that's the thing. That's the weird thing about it, though, right? Because they start getting into it, and the people in the bunker. Uh huh. Uh, what's her, the female scientist whose name I can't Audrey, remember? Audrey. Audrey White. Yeah. Audrey is saying, "Oh, we're all exposed because they left the they left the, the vents vent, open. The vents open, which makes sense. You're in an underground bunker, and you need to get fresh air from somewhere. Right. So there must be, have been something in the air as the comet passed over that. Right. Yeah. That descended down and. Yeah. So I, I was know. just I was surprised at how much it's for something yeah. that isn't explained ever as far as yes. i know right they don't explain anything about it right no it's just it was the comet yeah for something that isn't <laughs> explained it's the comet that killed the dinosaurs it's back and now it's killed most of most of the people it's more effective now because when yes. it killed the dinosaurs it left all those pesky bones all around 
Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's yeah. grown in its strength. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was surprised to see that there were uh, multiple shifts in in the uh, degradation and stuff. Yeah, which is, I, I think I like that because it does make it different, and it does give you something to do. I, I want to say it's a bit of a backup in case mm. the other stuff that you're doing is, is not that interesting. Yeah. But luckily, the other stuff they're doing is pretty interesting. Right. Or at least it's fun anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It definitely feels like a method to give them some secondary antagonists yeah. to fight against. Uh, to build up towards meeting up with the scientists and having to deal with that. Um, and yeah, the, zomb- the zombies are just fun. <laughs> yeah because they they are they are more human than most zombies in most films yes because they are they seem to hold on to their humanity for longer right they can they and talk and stuff yes yeah. yeah and and they gradually descend into some sort of psychosis which seems to vary from person to person um some people seem to get kind of confused and uncoordinated other people seem to get violent mm-hmm. but i think that some some stock boys turn into yeah. <laughs> rejects from double dragon tryouts <laughs> oh god they were so good um yeah the 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 comet stuff is interesting and i think it plays into that sort of b movie vibe and it is definitely one of those things where the more you try to lay it out and mm-hmm. the more you try to define the rules and exactly how it works and, well, if it was in the air, then wouldn't it be bad enough that they went outside at all? And if somebody is in, is in, uh, infected or whatever, does does it ever transfer? Is it contagious? Is it not? Mm-hmm. If you start to get into all of that, this this kind of falls apart. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's Yeah, th- they give you just enough yes. to to hang stuff on, hang yep. the action on. Yep. And fun fact, a little bit of trivia that I just mm. made up is that yeah. <laughs> you just made up. Yeah, uh, Phil Collins in the air tonight about this movie. Mm. Written about this movie. Did you see in the movie theater? They didn't it's a fun, weird thing. They didn't want to use it. Like he's like weird. I wrote this for the movie. Yeah, they here said, it is. It's for free. They said we're, we're sorry, Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. We got a ton of music. Yes. That everybody knows and loves. We have no room for your song. Music that everybody knows and loves, Clay. Like what? Like, um, well, um, a a version of Cindy of Girls Just Want to Have Fun <laughs> by someone other than Cindy yes. Lauper, because I assume the original was too expensive. Yeah, I, I think that's a safe At assumption. first I thought it was, did you know that's a cover? Did you know the girls just want to have a fun, the Cindy Lauper version as a cover? I did not know that. Yeah, it's it was originally recorded in 1979. I can't remember the name of the person. I think it was a guy who wrote it, who recorded it. Creepy. And so I, when I heard that in the movie, I thought, oh, I, I, I don't know if I've ever heard the original. Mm. And so I thought, oh, I wonder if this is actually the original. No. It is very much not, no. <laughs> because... I, I as I was listening, I was like, "Oh wow, the original is just the production is almost identical to the Cindy uh, Cindy yeah, Lauper like version." A slightly inferior Cindy Lauper singing this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> not the original. It's just no. is a uh, one of those things where using the actual track probably too expensive, which is weird yeah. to think that Phil they, he was just going to give him the song. <laughs> I love this made up trivia that you just made up right now. Um, I had a thought and then I lost it. Sorry, I, I took you off track. With you my, did. You just just your Phil Collins trivia just blew my mind. <laughs> oh, there's a um, there's a poster in the movie theater for a movie called Red Dust. Oh yes, starring Clark Gable. Yes, that is a real movie. Oh really? Is it a, like a Dust Bowl movie or something? It's or it's, it's like a like on a rubber plantation okay. somewhere, and I I I only skimmed the summary. It sounded like a bummer. I'm, I'm sure it was, yeah. <laughs> There's also, I believe, uh, a poster for Death Race 2000. I think is, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The girl who plays Reggie, I think, is in that. Oh, or fun. Or maybe not her. Maybe it was... Maybe it was... Uh, Sam yet again. Yeah. No, it was um, 
Mary Warnoff, the one from uh, Oh yeah, the Scientist. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> so this movie, I really enjoyed, not only for its silly sort of B movie style, and the kind of mix of like slapstick humor mm-hmm. and and stuff in it. I really enjoyed the relationship between Reggie and Sam. Yeah, it's good. I yeah. I was kind of shocked. Like I kept sort of expecting it to misstep somewhere. Like I, I like when they started down the path of like oh, she has to go home like so so Reggie wakes up in the morning with her projectionist boyfriend who gets bludgeoned by a zombie shortly after. Mm-hmm. And then she realizes something's weird. She goes outside. She gets attacked by the zombie. She gets on the now dead boyfriend's motorcycle and drives home. Mm-hmm. Cause she has to check on her family and she's looking for her sister. And the sister immediately is just like the blonde, the immature blonde dits mm-hmm. to Reggie's more savvy kind of like badass vibe, mm-hmm. you know? And then very shortly, they sort of undo all of that like sam is still a a a, a kind of flaky teenager in a lot of ways but it turns out that they're both really good at survival stuff they're They're both both, very capable yeah yeah they're both really capable and and i liked that turn and then i got nervous again when it was saying um when when they were kind of bickering over hector Mm -hmm. um where sam was like he's the last man he might be the last man on earth and like why do you get him why mm-hmm. don't i why don't i get him i was like oh no we're going to go down one of these plots where like she betrays them for a guy or something or if was... not betrayal they're just going to get into a dramatic argument about it which they really don't right they yeah. really don't they they get in a, a quick argument and then they both end up laughing about it yeah and then they sort of move on from it mm. like it it comes up again later but it almost seems like a joke yeah, I I think it's I think it's a good move the way that they play their relationship because yeah. I think if they tried to do anything too heavy, it just would drag the whole thing down, you know. Yeah. Because th- I I think they are Sam is portrayed as kind of flaky, but you know, she she has things that she cares about. Oh you yeah. Know, like you said, the Hector thing kind of hurts her a little bit. Yeah. Um but she never, it never drives her to to do anything underhanded or to or stupid or stupid or yeah. to build to this argument between the two of them or something where they yeah. end up going their separate ways and then she, then she's right. gonna go get her sister back. I mean, some yeah. of that's they kind of flip that a little bit, but um, but yeah, it just it, there's pl- the tone of this is mm-hmm. just really good. Yeah, it's really smart because it doesn't. It doesn't dwell much on how depressing or depraved it could be. Mm-hmm. It's just the it's the apocalypse through the eyes of a, of a teenage valley girls, <laughs> which is fun. Yeah, it, but there is there is sort of a moment where they're sitting outside on the hood of the cop car, mm-hmm. the the two sisters, and they're talking, and Sam has this sort of moment where she starts saying like, "Oh." You know, there was this new boy at school and I actually really liked him. Yeah. And, you know, I, I thought my friend thought he was going to ask me out soon. And, oh, yeah, my friend, she was failing math class and was trying to figure out how not to let her parents know. And, like, she's being sort of flippant and valley girl about it, but she starts to kind of cry. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, they don't linger too long on it, but it is a nice little moment of, like, oh, yeah, like, of course they'd be sad and upset. Mm. Like, of course... You know, they don't know fully what's going on if everybody all over the world has been affected by this, but they know the people in their immediate area have. And so, yeah, if Sam's supposed to be her younger sister, Reggie's younger sister, and Reggie is 18, that means Sam is, what, 15 or 16? Yeah, yes. Um, Which is creepy because this movie sexualizes the hell out of her. Mm-hmm. Um. But at the same time, it was kind of nice that, like, she is also a kid. Yeah. Like, she she needs a moment to be comforted by her big sister. Again, it does, like, the more age-appropriate version of this is mm-hmm. Emma Stone and Abigail Breslin in Zombieland. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, it was just kind of nice. I was, I was surprised to see a movie that's sort of a, a, a comedy from 1984. Mm-hmm 
treat a sister relationship so yeah. like you know i don't know just like tenderly in a weird way yeah um they are the foundational couple in this movie like yeah. they are the two like sam is not fully pushed aside in favor of hector right it doesn't yeah. become a movie about just reggie and hector trying to like stay together through the Right. apocalypse with sam as like a background character instead sam is still a very vital part of it and I yeah liked, i liked that hector's kind of the disposable hunk <laughs> you know like yes. he doesn't he's there but he, he, he's, he does he does some a well, couple, he, he does stuff but he like shows up when he's needed yeah he's not critical to the yeah. character relationships you know he's True. just sort of like he's critical to the plot yes yeah 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 um but yeah they do a nice little flip i i was not expect i didn't know what this movie was going to throw at me enough mm. i don't know why i thought this but mm. i totally bought i thought that they killed sam greg did too yeah i don't know what, yeah. for, for what i mean i, Just I think fully it was, was fully believed it i think it, it helped that she kills herself with the same stuff yeah i, or I assume she does anyway but, yeah um that i was like oh shit I, that's damn yeah and the it, the the scene sort of makes a point of having so by this point the, the scientists have caught up with the girls and they are the scientists are seeking out survivors because they want to use their blood mm -hmm. to create a serum that will either slow the progress of the comet infection or stop mm -hmm. it right that's yeah. kind of where we're at audrey our our female scientist in a sea of mansplainers mm -hmm. is trying to not participate in this plan she thinks it's a bad plan she doesn't want to hurt people. Mm -hmm. So she kills Sam, it seems. It seems so, it, it it's it seems like she's resistant. They play it as though she's resistant to their plan, but kind of at the mercy of the group. So I believe what happens is she drugs Sam to make it look like she's dead. Right. So the other guy won't steal her blood or something. Right, right. It it saves her from what yes. what what they're taking reggie to do yeah. to her yeah and gives her an opportunity to hook back up with hector mm -hmm. and she writes it all out for them before she goes totally crazy mm -hmm. um but yeah i thought i thought the the scene where she injects sam worked really well because sam's lying in the bed and talking and you can kind of very visibly see her breathing mm -hmm. and when, after she gives her the injection you don't yeah. And I feel like that was the thing to me that made me be like, wait a minute, is she really dead? I think also because the way that they play that whole sequence is not the way that they usually do these things. Right. Like the lead up and that sequence is because <clears throat> when these scientists show up and they're kind of like, all right, well, we got to take her. We got to take Reggie in because mm -hmm. she's fine. But Sam, she's got like a rash or something. I don't know if it's she's allergic to shrimp or if it's this <laughs> dust thing. But but we think it's definitely the dust we thing. We think it's definitely the dust thing. So yeah. we got to split them up. And then, it, you know, the thing I was so surprised by mm. was they put up zero fight whatsoever. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Reggie, could you come with us? And she's like, yeah, yeah. okay. And then yeah. like she flies off and she's like, see ya. Yeah. I'll see you soon. And like there's no... Ex expectation that what they're doing is underhanded or anything yeah. they just split and so i think that was why I, I bought it because they are so um oblivious to what's going on mm -hmm. that they're what they're going to do in the next scene is oh they're going to show you yeah they're going to fucking kill her yeah um <laughs> Yeah, and I, think, I it, it never occurred to me how much of a bummer that would be yeah. at the time, but <laughs> but I I think that moment makes so much sense because by by this point some of the fun has worn off. Mm -hmm. I think for them they they not just, for Hector. Hector's having oh a, no, he Hector, hasn't even gone to the costume store yet. Hector's having a grand old time in yeah. San Diego. Um, the girls after having you know gotten together at the beginning of the movie gone to the radio station because they think the radio is a real person mm -hmm. turns out to be a recording and that's where they meet hector they have then split up from hector the girls go to the mall and that's where the psycho stock boys attack them yes and that scene actually like ends or, or towards the end is really scary yeah because this the stock boys have won and they've chained the girls together back to back and he's playing Russian roulette yeah. on Sam. Yeah. And it's like 
the scientists swoop in and save them at the last minute. And the scientists are adults, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they, they kind of seem like the military. Mm-hmm. So they very much read as authority figures to this 18 year old and 16 year old who almost just got killed. Right. And so, yeah, of course they're thrilled to see them. They're thinking, Oh my God, there's so many more survivors. Mm-hmm. We're going to be okay. The grownups are here. Right. They're going to take care of us. So if they tell me to get in the helicopter and that you're going to wait here with this nice lady for Hector to come back so you guys can come back together, Mm -hmm. sure. Also, their dad is military. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a built-in comfort there. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing he never told them was, whatever you do, don't trust scientists. No. If they say they're from a think tank, just pull out that MAC-10 and finish them all. Yeah. Maybe you'll hit one of them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> It'll be enough to scare the others off. Yeah, I I loved the stock boy scene because like yes. <laughs> so this all of this happens in this the span of like a twenty four hours. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's been like the night of the comet happens. There's mm-hmm. a day, and then it seems like they spend a night in the radio station. Yes. Oh yeah. So maybe two days. But yeah. that's not this. We're talking like. 36 hours at this Talks. point <laughs> and Talks. like the few remaining living people have fully descended into yeah because you've got you've got hector and and the two girls yes. who are kind of like yeah this is crazy it looks like everybody's gone maybe we should try and figure out what's happening or like right make talk contact to. with somebody else and again it's only been there. maybe two days yeah and they go to the mall and run into the stock boys who have immediately yeah turned into escape from new york characters yes you know yes, and i mean perfect. i know i know they're turning into zombies or whatever but yeah. it's just like they go they they're basically like we rule them all yeah. now <laughs> and i love that willie has emerged as their leader mm-hmm. and the other three are just like goons yes they're just mall goons now <laughs> yes yeah but yeah it's sort of like this this comet has driven them to psychosis really quickly and really fully, mm-hmm. like there's no hesitation at all. There's no moment of sort of like, not even any of the other goons are like, hey, Willie, should we really be doing this? I, I feel for some reason like this is wrong. And then Willie being like, now I will shoot you. Yes. And they're all just like blindly obeying him. And he's being as as uh, Jared Leto, the Joker, as he possibly can be. They almost They almost feel like they are community characters. Yes. You know, like the, yeah. epi- the paintball yes. episode where it turns into like the post apocalypse. Yes. And yes, everybody yes. immediately turns into gangs. Yeah. And like Chang is, yeah. is leading a bunch of people who are just following him around and stuff. Yep. That's what they feel like. You kind of sad that COVID didn't result in that. Yeah, everybody was. <laughs> everybody was like, this is it. You're right. Can't we just all be like non lethal versions of I like got, Mad Max I, gangs? I had, you know how long I spent practicing with three glass bottles clinking them together oh. so i could get Warriors. so i could get the people i don't like to come out and play come out to play EA. every day every day <laughs> and i never got to use it greg kept complaining that he wanted more uh interesting and inventive face masks yes yeah yeah, yeah face masks they were pretty yeah. boring yeah standard surgical masks he wanted like you know skull faces and dinosaur heads and stuff yeah i saw some i remember there being something that some, made you look like daft punk yeah i saw a couple like that where yeah. they ended up being like cobra commander style yeah. type things which were kind of fun yeah but those didn't catch on no it was no. a brief moment in time yeah <laughs> anyway regrets we regrets. have a few <laughs> well we know for next time <laughs> I just want us all to have as many costume changes as Hector. Yeah. Nobody, I like, I didn't, I figured in this situation with the world falling apart, Mm -hmm. why send people money when you could send them one shoulder pad? Yeah. To wear over their leather jacket. Some sort of, some sort of forearm guard. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Something, something practical for a sport that you repurpose for (laughs) self-defense. Bandoliers for everyone. Yeah, the, nobody yeah. was walking around shirtless, with <laughs> leather straps and hockey masks on or anything, <laughs> and big shiny silver boots. Yeah. Do you think the people at Burning Man even realized anything happened? No. No, probably. No, no, not. no. They were just high on so <clears throat> many drugs. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Hector, yes. What a weird, 
What I want to see the movie about whatever happens with Hector in between when he goes to his home uh, yes. in San Diego. Yes. And when he arrives back in LA with a beautiful new car, which is an old car, dressed as Santa Claus, uh, uh, and apparently made multiple costume stops along the way. Yes. Because later on, when he pulls off his Bugs Bunny routine, which he's, inv- he's like a like a yokel farmer. Yeah, who or just like has a lo- cowboy or something. Who just he's has like, loose, loose dynamite in the car. <laughs> yeah, because he's become Yosemite Sam slash Bugs Bunny. Yeah, he stopped off yeah. at the Acme yes. prop store on the yes. way back. I feel like Hector. Do you think COVID made it to Toontown? No, I don't. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I think that's like a cross species thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think they had any idea when they wrote this movie of what kind of character they wanted Hector to be aside from Reggie's love interest. Yes. Which is a refreshing turnaround from yeah, what it usually right. is. That's, that's what I, that's what I meant yeah. before. He's just like the disposable hug. Yeah, he's arm candy like, yeah. essentially. Yeah. yeah he's he, kind of cute. And yeah. Does he, stuff. He shows up and he's pretty devoted to the, to the girl he's met. Yeah. Like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, and what was I even really like that when he finally does break in to save her. Yeah. He does he's not like Rambo. He's like yeah. Bugs Bunny. Yes. He's like <laughs> yeah, he's hiding under cars to hide his loose dynamite. Yeah, he even does a a, a bit where he's like acting like a cowboy. Yes. Lures hey, the man, guard. You like girls? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that's what he said. And he opens his trunk to what we think for a split second is Sam's dead body. Right. In the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> I got live ones too. <laughs> this cost extra. But yeah, I mean he he has he is like four totally hey guys, different Hey guys, you like girls. Yes. <laughs> Come over look at my trunk. Look at my trunk. <laughs> oh boy. He is four entirely different characters. Yes. He's the Hector he is when when you meet him. And he's this sort of like serious, he's, he's very wary. He's, he's like, don't get any closer, get into the light. Let me see your face. Let me see your eyes. Mm -hmm. He's very cautious. He's very serious. He's worried about his mom. It's like, oh man, this guy is serious guy in this kind of lighthearted movie. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to San Diego and when he leaves, we see him again as Santa Claus. Yes. And when he walks back into the radio station and scientist lady Audrey is like, on her last couple minutes before she doses herself and goes gently into that good night, um, he just goes, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> he he responds the way that you respond, like in college when yeah. you walk into your dorm and there's a stranger in there. Yeah, you're just like, "Yeah, hey, hey," and you're like, "Hey, what's going on?" <laughs> All right, and then you just walk into your room. Yeah, yes, yeah. He's very casual about it, and then he turns into Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the very end of the movie, he's like in a suit and yeah, he's like they... daddy now. He's like telling the children not to cross the road and against the light. Did they get married or something sort of? Are they I, play I'm... acting that they're getting married? I think they're like, we are the mommy and daddy and these are our children now. Mm-hmm. Even though, even though he's... she's 18 and that oldest boy is definitely like 14 years old. Mm. Yeah. The blonde kid. Great, great bit at the end where he throws the guns in the trash. Yes. And the kids are like, oh, don't throw yeah. the guns. I don't remember. I'll take one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hector. Yeah. He's a weird dude. I do wish. Here was my, my one note for how they handled Hector. Mm-hmm. I wish he showed up as Santa Claus to the base. Oh, at the end? Yeah. yeah. Because I think one of the scientists even has a line about how, oh, because because they're telling the children, the little kids, that's right, you're going to go yeah. to the North Pole and live with mm-hmm. Santa, and the boy is like, Santa's not real, and the one of the scientists is like, oh, young man, you don't understand. Of course, Santa's real. I would have loved it if Hector showed up yeah. behind him and they were like, oh, it is Santa. Yeah, he that's is- what they should have done. Yeah. <laughs> The cowboy thing is so weird, but I, I agree. So weird. And also because it's a Christmas movie. It takes place at yes! Christmas. Yeah. Which I wanted to ask you about. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that put it over the top too much or that it, it worked? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of a non-factor. Yeah. Because it's... It, it takes place at Christmas, but like they don't really lean into it that much. It's like takes place in Christmas in L.A. Yeah. So there's no snow. There's no 
you know, people have some decorations up. I honestly, I totally forgot that it took place at Christmas yes. until we were just talking about the Santa Claus thing. And I was yeah. like, oh, right. Yeah, it's yeah. Christmas. Yeah, that's why there's like Christmas music I mean, playing it, in the car that stopped in the middle of the road. It doesn't explain where or why he got the Santa suit, no. but it explains why it would be available to get. Yeah. So yeah, I, it's 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 a, it's an odd choice because um, it doesn't really I add that much. I almost wonder if they were just filming it during Christmas time and there were some Maybe. places that were letting them film like a, like a, a movie theater lobby that was actually letting them film in there. Possible. But it had a Christmas tree and they were like, shit, what do we do? I went, ah, we'll just say it's a Christmas. Yeah. Um, I know that this, a lot of the exterior stuff was shot very kind of uh, on the on the run where mm. um, the, the abandoned street stuff was shot like very early in the morning before on business days classic before people started moving or moving around and stuff yeah and they would get some shots like between lights intersections between oh, lights before the yeah. traffic would come through <laughs> um <clears throat> it's kind of great actually yeah, yeah so it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me and I, they had very little time and very little money yeah and so some things they were like there's a lot there's a, a bunch of dialogue that was improvised mm. um some scenes were were i guess the scene where the stepmother slaps Sam. Yeah. They did it like twice with a fake slap and then Kelly yeah. Maroney's like, you got to slap me for real because yeah. I, I, I don't want to waste any more film yeah. trying to act what it would be like to slap somebody wow. or get slapped. <clears throat> so there's a lot of that. that so it wouldn't surprise hilarious. me. That hilarious. Yeah, that was a whole nother, <laughs> like there's so much. In that first like 10 minutes before the world ends, mm-hmm. you learn so quickly so much about your Everybody. two main characters. Yeah. yeah. There's so much stuff going on. Yeah, like that party that the the part I that's probably my favorite part about this is the yeah. first ten minutes where they are just jam packed, full of stuff that just yeah. goes away. But they do a really good job of it too. Oh yeah, like yeah. if this had been legitimate setup for characters that then carried forward through the rest of the film, I would be like, oh, good job. Yeah, like, good job setting those folks up really efficiently and then just getting into the meat of the movie. Yeah. And instead, it was kind of surprising to see them put all that effort into <laughs> to establishing yeah. these characters and relationships and then just wiping everybody off the board. Because, I mean, the hallmark of, of these kind of movies is usually, all right, we got like 10 people right? because we need people to get killed along the way. Yes. And this movie doesn't really have that. No, it, there's just like random mall goons. Who yeah. Show. And it, they kind of cheat it by having the zombies able to talk. And so mm. you can still have characters who get killed or whatever, but they don't have to be part of this group. Because like, right. there's probably a different version of this where the boyfriend from the the film place yeah. survives past the first scene, and maybe the stepmother survives. Right, or the dad shows up, and then X, Y, and Z happen. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's another another ending to this where it ends with the dad coming back or something. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they don't, they, they just, they give you all of this stuff up front and then they yep. just sort of clean, wipe every, the, everything off the slate and you get the stuff where like the, 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 the stepmother is having an affair with the guy yes, who, with the neighbor who lives down the street because the father is, works for the government and he's never home. Right. And she seems to just only be with him for the status or the money. Yeah. Or something. Or something. And the, the boyfriend or whatever you want to call it at the at the movie theater is it's like doing a deal to rent out a yeah, film print that he doesn't own like it's the theater's prints that he's letting people take overnight yeah and then getting paid for it and he's offering reggie like 15 bucks to stay overnight with him and open the door for him when he leaves right or when he needs to come back in yeah 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 it's a it's, lot of stuff it's a lot but the thing that it does that i enjoy is that it makes Reggie and her f- and her sister feel like real characters. Yes. Like they have backgrounds and personalities and history and you you get to sort of see a little bit more of them than just like survivor mode. Mm-hmm. We've got a Mac 10 and a mall. Yeah. It uh, did you find it at all str- I don't know if strange is the word, but the <laughs> I emphasis found some, several things in this movie strange. The emphasis they put on Reggie uh-huh. and her character being cool but like also a a a fine being a nerd yeah was really interesting for the time because you know she's yeah. she's talking about she 
she's she's well rounded in Superman's power set. Yes. Um, and also she's like really into that video game. Yep. Yep. And I think there's a couple other things too that are more like nerdy, quote unquote, type things for the time. Yeah. But it's never a point of contention or anything. She's just like, no, that's just the shit that I that I'm I into. I think she's also pretty enough to get away with it. That's that's fair. Like she's very beautiful, so it's easier to sort of be like, yeah. She can kind of do what she wants. Would it surprise you to learn that Joss Whedon has cited this film as a, quote, big influence for his original film script of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Wow. Yeah, no. It would not surprise me at all. I don't think I would have thought of that on my own, but now that you say it, I'm like, yeah. Because Reggie's great, but she does feel very much like a like a dream girl mm-hmm. for a couple nerds writing a movie about comet zombies. Oh, absolutely. And you I know? mean, even Sam, she's ditzy, but she's capable, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, she's very... Buffy-esque, or at least original yes. Buffy-esque, yes. where she's worried about her nails but can still roundhouse kick your face off. Right, right. Like, she's in her cheerleader outfit, but she's got she's got the Mac-10 and she knows how to use it. Yes. Yeah. So, one other thing I want to ask you about. Sure. Because <clears throat> I read this in the trivia. And I don't know what it means. Oh, boy. <clears throat> if, if I figured... If there's anyone who could explain this, hopefully it's you. Uh Director Tom Eberhardt recalls receiving praise for his creative decision to depict Kelly Maroney's character walking out of an elevator by focusing on her feet instead of a conventional full body or upper body shot. Eberhardt told the scene, uh, told the Projection Booth podcast that this was in fact a result of running out of time to shoot the the scene on location. (laughs) With the actress unavailable to participate in pickups, a member of the production team wore the character's sneakers and with no actual elevator to film in, a couple of screens were filmed in tight close-ups and pulled apart manually by stagehands to simulate the opening of the doors. The use of footwear to represent the entire character is an example of the literary and visual metaphor device of synecdoche. (laughs) I don't know if I said that word right. You did. You did. That's... uh, That took a turn at the end there. I was not expecting that. It really did. Yeah, damn. I'm trying to go back to like literary criticism and 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 like yeah all my like early lit classes synecdoche i think is one of those things where it's imbuing an item or a specific visual with like increased meaning okay does that jive with what you're reading on the google a figure of speech in which a part is made to represent the whole or vice versa as in cleveland won by six runs meaning cleveland's baseball team yes okay yeah. Yeah, so it's it's taking one image or part of a person or a thing and letting it represent the entire person. I see. At least in this case. So like they do a couple different times focus on Sam's feet. Mm-hmm. They they show her Not from for creepy reasons. Well, maybe for, maybe creepy, for creepy reasons. reasons, we don't know. Yeah. Um but yeah, they, they, they show her feet several times. I can think of like earlier on in the movie where they're still in the house mm-hmm. and she's in the cheerleading outfit. It kind of shoots from the floor, almost like between her legs. And you can see Reggie standing down the hallway. Oh, sure, yep. And she sort of does this cute little like bop thing up in her sneakers and then like traipses down the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, in her dream sequence, she takes her shoes off and it focuses... Right. Very much like, yeah, there's several scenes where it is, for some weird, potentially creepy reason, uh, pretty fixated on her feet and shoes. She's throwing yeah. shoes oh, in the right. mall. Yeah. 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 It's a interesting device. I wonder if it was intentional. We definitely know <laughs> that there is a literary scholar somewhere that loves this movie enough to write. Oh, I God, yeah. trivia about it. <laughs> Not to scare you, Clay, <clears throat> but there is a lit nerd for every movie oh i'm sure we're out there yes and we have that's why you're here is to to cover the ones that don't have them (laughs) poorly apparently i can't even remember what synecdoche is without google telling me (laughs) if this was an evil dead movie Mm. that what they were talking about would be a lot less um of a literary illusion and would be referred to as a fake shemp which is <laughs> which is uh I'm not going to go into explaining it but it's something that is is um unique to evil dead movies even though it's something that happens in every movie but <laughs> the term is unique to evil dead movies nice. <clears throat> um the ending what did you think yeah. about the the ending when uh, when DMK Oh god DMK the rapper shows up <laughs> DM, DMK all fucking day Yeah 
Um, so first of all, I thought it was super weird that Reggie and Hector are like, we have to become perfect, upstanding I, parents. You know, like, I thought it was weird too, but I'm like, there's something creepy, but also it's like, it's very upbeat, but what they're actually doing is yeah. really depressing and weird. Right. I almost wish there had been a like two months later yeah. message or something. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where a little bit of time had passed. They'd been living with the kids. It was maybe like a fun dress up game rather than like, this is how we live our lives now. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your Sunday best and let mommy take pictures of you all day. Um, But no, DMK showing up, I loved. Mm-hmm. I thought that was so corny and so perfect. Yeah, it was a good a good way to to close out the story because right because DMK is the initials of the person who had knocked one of Reggie's high scores off yeah. of the video game machine at the very beginning, and mm-hmm. she's she's pissed about it. And then Sam spends the whole movie kind of being like, "Oh no, I'm never gonna have a boyfriend." Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then we solve both of these problems by having the man, the myth the dmk appear you know it's funny and he's enough of a ditz that i'm like yeah you you and sam would be (laughs) very happy together i was almost expecting it to go the other way in this movie oh where the the sam stuff she was so much like uh why does you why do you always have to get the guy part of me was Mm -hmm. thinking like i think there's a chance that hector ends up with sam in this oh i'm glad they didn't do that she's too young (laughs) that's fair (laughs) I know the actress was not that young, but the character is supposed yeah, to be really that's true. young. If you think about it that way. She's supposed to be like a yeah. sophomore because the boy she has a crush on in school, she's like, he he's a junior. Mm-hmm. And, the, and Reggie's like, oh yeah, I don't really hang out with juniors. That means she's a senior. Reggie's a senior. Yes. Yes. And which Hector means... is like 28. <laughs> right. Which is already like, ugh. And then you add in the fact that that means Sam is like 15. Yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really glad when some like 18 year old goober in, in a in a in a fancy car shows up and it's just like, oh hey, I'm I'm really sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. Because he almost runs that's, her over. Yeah, that's true. I guess. I was that, like, yeah, just some yeah. sort of blithe idiot for her to hang around with. He's yeah. got 23 cars and he'll take you for a ride. Uh, it's it's great until they get back to his house and it turns yeah. out he's. Got a stock boy gang of cannibals at his place. <laughs> that is the second movie in the series. Streets, streets of Rage characters. <laughs> um, yeah, so the music in this movie, I wanted to yes. touch on for a little, uh, just briefly. Yes, other um, than the rip-off Cyndi Lauper. Yes, there's something weird about this era of, well, I would say this era probably more than most, where mm. the soundtrack becomes such a big... Propo- a big part of the movie and yes. I, i'm talking like this movie is over soundtracked jam-packed yeah and there's not really a single moment where there's not a v- song playing vigorously in the background yeah and the thing is though there, as i was joking on the uh, the the chat while we were watching yeah. this i was kind of referring to them as as like schrodinger's soundtrack yeah because yeah i i'm not convinced that these songs exist anywhere but outside but in the yes start of this movie and the end of this movie right because they're all just very 80 sounding songs from people yes. who probably recorded a bunch of music but they're not recognizable hits except for girls just want to have fun and not clearly right. they didn't have the money to do the real one <laughs> but it's just like there's so many songs it was like a, I had like a larger existential moment where I was like, man, there's just been so much music recorded in like history <laughs> and in all of human history. 90 percent of it just falls away to the winds of time. Yes. And this movie's a great example of that. Yes. It's just songs that are of the era and died in the era. And if an 80s song plays in a mall in Night of the Comet, but nobody is there to hear it. Did it ever exist? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is weird it's it's like all of the songs in this movie sound like other songs you've heard somewhere mm-hmm. and a new song would start and i'd be like oh wait do i know this one maybe i know this one maybe i know this one from something else and then i'd look it up and be like nope nope don't know it yeah i <laughs> never thought, heard this before in my life i thought one of the songs was willie nelson 
but it, I don't think it was. I don't think it was. But I looked up some of them, and there's like multiple songs from one of the guys from Sha Na Na. And like, that's what you're dealing Perfect. with in this movie, where it's like Perfect. the second greaser from the left. Oh. And Sha Na Na decided to do some solo stuff. No, I love it. That's so perfect for this movie. I, I could not be happier to hear that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be looking for it on vinyl. But yeah. um, <laughs> this is. Learn some of these songs for karaoke night. Oh, boy. I, be- I, say, I bet they don't exist. I, I bet these songs Make don't exist. Make your own track. Bring it with you. <laughs> Uh, this is number 183 out of 200 on our list. How do you mm. feel about the placement? Too high, too low, or would you remove it from the list? <sighs> okay, so I really enjoyed this movie. Oh, boy, Joe, buckle up. <laughs> but I don't know if it should be on this list. Mm-hmm. It's so fun, and it, and I really I feel like a monster being like, take it off, who needs it? Because it, mm-hmm. it, that's not how I feel, but it's just... I keep coming back to the whole like we only if if we are limiting ourselves and we only have 200 horror movies mm-hmm. that are the greatest of all time. Is this one of them? Mm. Well, two things. Yes. One, mm. how dare you? <laughs> I knew that was coming. I deserve it. I understand. Two, I think I think it's fair mm. that where we have our uh shining litmus test yes. as far as placement. Yeah. We have also kind of at least I feel like I I have developed a black christmas litmus test Ah. whereas black christmas still currently not on this list would i remove night of the comet for black christmas yeah the answer is yes i would yeah it's not to say i didn't like it right it's very fun this is exactly where i'm coming at at this from Mm -hmm. i'm really glad you remembered that and because i know black christmas is kind of like tiptoed on and off a couple times Mm -hmm. like it's like oh no it's 198 nope now it's gone again Um, but I think that's the perfect example of what I'm talking about, where yeah. it's like, if we're keeping this limited to just 200 movies, it's really hard to include this over some of the some of the other ones that have been left off that feel much more vital Yeah, that they should be included. And also, around this time, like I think in the same couple years, mm. you had Night of the Comet, yep. Night of the Demon, mm. and Night of the Creeps. I don't know which one is which. Yeah. <laughs> If if all of them aren't on there, well, none now, of them should be on there. Now you know which one Night of the Comet That's is. That's true. I yeah. do know yeah, which one Night of the know. Comet is. Night yeah. of the Creeps, I actually do know the difference. Night, Night of the Creeps is the one with uh, Tom Atkinson, okay. which is also a high school zombie movie, I believe. Huh. Which I think also involves a, a comet or something. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Night of the Demon is uh it's about a bunch of kids one night where a demon shows up so yeah um i think that's gonna do it for night of the comet uh we do want to talk a little bit about scream six yes, but yes. before we do that i'm gonna hit the randomizer button beep, 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 beep. and next week we'll be doing number 29 oh which is roman polanski's repulsion oh which is uh one of a uh hallmark of the lady going crazy type yeah. horror movie so i've actually never seen it i'm looking forward to watching that i feel like i had a college not boyfriend but person who tried to make me watch part of this and i was just like oh but i don't like you that sounds that sounds right yeah this, this is one of those movies where like somebody could when you're the guy you probably shouldn't be dating is like let's yes. watch repulsion yes you ever seen it yeah it's a work of art yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so that's gonna do it for night of the comet but if you want to hang around and listen to us talk very spoiler filled on scream for a little bit that's gonna happen now so you've been warned <laughs> scream six yeah that's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> well good night everyone <laughs> yeah no it was it was definitely fun mm-hmm. um it was definitely a scream movie yeah like yeah. if if you like other scream movies, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this one. Right. Yeah. Um it very much fits with the whole series, especially 5. It it very much yes. feels like a yep. sequel to 5, mm-hmm. which it, which it is, but it spiritually and and thematically also feels like a sequel to 5. Yeah, I I think they um I think they managed to keep certain things fresh like having three mm. killers was something they'd never done before. Yep. Um, and I thought they used Gale and Kirby pretty effectively. 
Yes. Uh, I think Gail's about run her course. I don't really yeah. know if she needs to keep coming back. Which I feel kind of bad about because I love Gail. But at the same yeah. time, I feel like they've done all the... Is she the ball busting reporter? Is she secretly more sensitive than she seems? Yeah. Is she and Sydney best friends? Is she going to kind of use you for fame? Yeah, they did like a, it was a nice joke where yeah. they did the uh, what's what's the main character's name? Oh God, I keep thinking about the main characters from Night of the Comet. Yeah, the one who's not Jenna Ortega. Uh, <laughs> is, is she also a Sam? I think she might be Sam Samantha Carpenter, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because right, because Billy Loomis, Sam Loomis, right? Yes. Uh, she takes a swing at Gail, but Gail dodges it, right? And then she says, "Like you got to be faster than that." And then Jenna Ortega clocks her. Yep. And it's like that's yep. that was fun. That's fun, but yep. like the reason they did that is almost identical to something she's done before, where yep. it's like she ended up using them for another book. Yes, and I think I think with Dewey gone, mm-hmm. there's yeah. just kind of not that emotional anchor for her is gone too. Mm-hmm. And if Niv Campbell's not going to be showing up anymore, it's it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it, 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 it unmoors Gail, like, morally and ethically. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, the, the, the big scene with her is when the killer attacks her at her mm-hmm. very swanky apartment yes. that she shares with her yes, with very her attractive. with her handsome, muscular boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, I think she's probably, like, I... Yeah, I will say I kind of wanted her to be one of the killers. I I think they're past that I, point. I think they are too. I think four was probably the place to do yeah, that. I yeah, I think they are too. But I was kind of hoping that there'd be some big turn where she was like, "You are the ones who got Dewey killed." I would be okay with it if they went like full Vincent Price with it, mm. where it's like in in this one, mm-hmm. you thought she was dead and she got caught in like. A burning building or something ah. and then she comes back and she's all yeah. scarred <laughs> see i was thinking it talking would be through a voice box that connected to her giant yeah pipe organ. her giant yeah. organ um i was thinking it'd be interesting if she were the one manipulating a couple of the younger kids mm-hmm. like maybe she wasn't actively ghost faced but she was sort of pulling the strings mm. and it was sort of a revenge thing of like before you all got my ex involved in this he was fine. Like, he, sure, he wasn't doing great. He was, like, a bit of an alcoholic and living in a trailer. But, like, he was alive. Yeah. And I could keep this He was fantasy. fine in a cosmic sense. Yeah. he existed. <laughs> but, you know, of, of this sort of, like, she's been through too much. Mm-hmm. And it's finally gotten to her. Yeah. And she only sees one way out of it. Or they make a couple comments throughout the movie about her still using uh, ghost face murders to uh, stay relevant. Right, yeah. Um, and it could be sort of like, well, with Dewey gone and Sydney's not speaking to me anymore, like, what do I have left? This yeah. is all I have. But they did not go that route. No, I, yeah, I, I think, um, I think moving forward, I would be happy to see Kirby again. Yeah. But Gail, I think she's got to pass the baton. Yeah. Especially since in this one, in my favorite scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. where I think it was might have been the same scene as the trying to punch her scene. Yeah. Or shortly after. Gail's like, I called Sydney and told her what's going on. Yeah. She's not interested. Yes. <laughs> okay, not explicitly, but that's what it felt yeah, like. It was like. She's, she's like, gone to a safe Thanks location for letting with her me family. Know. Thanks for yeah. letting me know, but I yeah. won't be coming to join you this time. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. And it's The scream is so unique in that way, right? Because it's the one modern slasher series Mm -hmm. where the main character is the survivor and not the killers right Right. because eventually in these movies it's always freddie's the one who comes back to kill a bunch of new people right and so every time sydney comes back it's like let the girl fucking live her life (laughs) you know does she even in the last one it it, it felt like uh really yeah but I, but I think she she felt that way in the last one right. too, where she showed up and she's like, "I am sick of this. Right. Like, I have children, I have a husband, I don't want to be doing this anymore." Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I think this one. It it scratches the itch. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's sort of like it does what a scream movie should do. Um, I think it was so much more obvious this time though. Like who, who was not a killer. 
Yes. As I said when we came out of the movie, I yeah. knew it wasn't Kirby because at no point was Ghostface four feet even. Yes. Yeah. So you know it's not Kirby. You know it's not Gail. Mm-hmm. You know it's not Jenna Ortega or her sister. Mm-hmm. You're pretty sure it's not the siblings that they're friends with, Mindy and Chad, yep. because they lived through it last time. Mm-hmm. So that leaves like five people. Yeah. And I, you're just kind of like, all right, who of, of this? Like, it's going to be somebody we've met. Right. Because it's always somebody you've met. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like, I would kind of love one of these where it was just like. Some random guy. Yeah, like, who yeah. the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be kind of great. Yeah, if you go Mike the Michael Myers way with it, where yeah. it's like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not coming after you for any reason. Right. It's just like you were there. So. Yeah, I just or like I am coming after you for a reason, but it's just because I think like the stab movies are. I just fun. Listen, and... I opened the phone book and yep. I covered my eyes and I just touched a number and it happened to be yours. So, yeah. well, I I did like the way this one opened. Yes. With the college, the college student who lures his professor <laughs> on a fake Tinder date and mm-hmm. then, or dating app date um and then kills her in an alleyway Mm -hmm. and then goes back home well the thing about it yeah i got really excited during that scene because after he kills the teacher he takes the mask off Mm -hmm. and i thought oh shit it's a Columbo episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought they were going to we try We were going to and... know the whole time right. he was doing it. I thought, and I was like, oh, that's really yeah. interesting. That would be a, a definite yeah. twist. But then they kind of like take a cut, go back to the usual thing, which is It's fine. funny though, because if they had gone that route, that's actually almost exactly where the most recent Halloween movie went. That's true. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. And I feel like that got very mixed. <laughs> People yeah. did not love that. The thing with that though is that- kind of what i was saying before you're coming to that movie to see michael myers sure and so if you are switching it off to somebody else right. there's going to be a segment of people who are like what the hell yeah enter th- i want to watch this 78 year old man yes. kill people halloween, god damn it halloween 3 has entered the chat you know? yeah <laughs> um but with with oh, screen boy. with the nature of screen being it can it's literally different people every time yeah i think you could i think you could pull that off i think yeah. it would be a very different kind of movie, but I think yeah. it would be pretty fun to try. I'm still waiting for a Scream movie where part of the way through they capture one of yeah. the killers. That would be I great. I really want that to happen, to be like, especially if it's somebody who's totally out of left field. Yeah. And then you're like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, if you're one, your sister's also in our group of friends, your boyfriend's in our group of friends, we stay at your mom's house all the time, is it any of those your best friends right over here is it any of them right. and then everybody's sort of doing almost like a the thing version of it yeah like i think that would be kind of fun i also uh, kind of building on that mm. i just want if you are getting in a tussle with ghostface yeah go for the fucking mask yeah. pull the mask <laughs> off i was I, yeah i saw people online talking about scream 2 uh-huh. and how oh the scene in the car when they have to climb out over ghostface oh, to get out of the car yeah, yeah. how amazing it is i'm like yeah f- sure she should take the mask off. Right. Because once you know yeah. who it is, at least one of them. Even if you're climbing over on the yeah. way out, just grab the mask. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would love them to find one of the killers. Yep. Um, and yeah, for, for it to be someone where it's like, okay, we know who this is, but we don't know how they're connected to us. Right. Even if you even if you kill them. So it's right. like they're dead. Yeah. You know who yeah, it is. Yeah, we got in dead. a fight. I yeah. stabbed them as we were struggling. <laughs> holy shit, is he actually dead? You pull the mask off. Oh my God, it's Clay. <laughs> it's always Clay. Uh, the the um, they the characters in this movie had some real uh, Wolverine healing power. Um, holy shit. Tolerance to giant blade wounds. People in this. took stab wounds to the abdomen like they were paper cuts yes the girlfriend she's like ow and gets, then i'm bleeding and she now gets i'm over here stabbed <gasps> and then like disemboweled almost, almost disemboweled yeah she almost gets gutted it, it's like she gets stabbed in the middle of her abdomen and then he pulls the knife up several inches yeah and then pulls the knife out and it's like she should be like the shark that they catch in Jaws before right. they catch actual especially, Jaws. Especially, <laughs> especially if she's climbing out on a ladder. Yes, like with her stomach hanging yes. down. Like oh, that should just my be. God. That's, Jesus that's Christ. game over. Even if they had just been like found like a roll of duct tape and had just like duct taped yeah. her around the middle yeah. and been like, "You got to hold on, honey. Like yeah. we have to just fucking climb this ladder." And, and then like, at the right. end, uh, the one twin there, 
yeah. gets stabbed. Yes. And she shows up at the end like nothing happened. They yeah. do have that line where she's like, I'm on so many painkillers right now. But <laughs> still, she got stabbed. Well, I mean, Jenna in the Ortega stomach. gets stabbed like twice. Multiple times. Yeah. And then it's just like, all right, I guess we have to sit here like and in like, the talk back, about too. how we feel. And then she falls yes. off of the balcony and yes. she's pretty like, banged up. Everyone should be in full body casts. Yeah, but I mean, she had one of those blankets that they give characters in movies <laughs> around her shoulders. So the she, magic healing blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is how did you feel about the setting? Because this this one was they made mm. much of the fact that it was like Ghostface in Manhattan. Yes. Well, uh, I'm of two minds of it. One is I like a different setting. It opened things up quite a bit. Sure. However, if Hey, where sh- Hey, this movie takes place in Manhattan is basically your entire marketing f- thing, which it was. You need to give me at least one shot yeah. at an identifiable New York landmark that you cannot fake. Right. Like the the scene at the beginning with the, the kid who kills his professor when he goes back home. Yep. They very clearly have him watching uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh-huh. Even Jason Takes Manhattan, which is about as big a bait and switch as you could possibly yes. get in this regard. <laughs> Has the one Almost sequence. Almost as much as Jason goes to hell. Yes. Yeah. Has the one sequence where they shot Jason Voorhees walking through Times Square. Yes. This movie doesn't have that. Like they, they go to, okay, Bodega, cool. Yeah. Train, cool. Yeah. I think they're in Central Park. I think they're supposed to be, yes. All three of those places you could have shot anywhere. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't look at a bench by some grass and go, right. that's definitely Central Park. Yeah. Like they're not... In front of the Chrysler Building or the right. the library from Ghostbusters or yeah, something. Yeah, we're not you know? getting to see the Statue of Liberty with a ghost face mask on. Yeah, or <laughs> yes, or ghost face in Times Square. Right. So I was a little bit disappointed at that where I was like, yeah, It does feel a little bit like a cop out. Yeah. Yeah. I did like, though, that there's the, the, the fact that it is Halloween. Mm-hmm. And because there have been online rumors and chatter going on about what happened... In, in Scream 5, and now a murder happens in New York, everybody starts buying ghost face masks. Yeah. I, yeah. Liked, I liked that. I thought that worked really well of like, you know, when they're on the train and there's like, it's a packed train because it's a weekend night on Halloween weekend. And there's also like seven different ghost faces sitting in the yeah, train car. Really and you're just like, yeah. oh, okay. Like one of the, this this is more feasible now that somebody could be running around in this getup mm. and no one would notice them. <laughs> I also wonder, I, I like the bit that they were doing where every attack, they left a mask from a previous killer. Yeah. That was cool. It, and I like the 30 the year old yeah yeah the sort of degraded look of it was cracked and stuff i almost wonder if that was an idea that they came up with for the last one Mm. because the last one is so billy loomis centric yeah um but (laughs) in that vein yeah uh one of the other things that i one of the downsides to the new york thing was when they got to the the place Uh where all of that stuff was being kept by the murderer Yes. It's like this abandoned theater yep. in like the Bronx, yeah. which is got to be 9,000 square feet of space. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Filled with with like electric key card locks. Yes. Filled with like all a, this crap. A high-end security <clears throat> system. Like a nice light, expensive light system. Yep. And then you find out that it's been purchased on a cop's salary. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, my you know, only thought was like i guess they have some inherited wealth in that family. sure i, I guess don't know. i mean maybe, i'm sure you can come maybe he owned the building because his family's been cops for so long yeah, i don't i don't know yeah that's what they give you a building uh, it's like probably. planting a tree yeah yeah i mean i believe it if it back in the 60s and 70s if you were a cop in new york you just had some connections where it could be like yeah i'll sell you that that that's true crumbling yeah. building for cheap but that was, I mean, obviously that's just a, a stupid nitpicky yeah. thing, but like that didn't really bother me yeah. that much. What did bother me a little bit was yes. when they revealed who the killers were. And yes. If you were saying it seemed kind of too obvious. Yeah. There was literally a moment where uh, Dylan, what the fuck is his name? It's not Dylan McDermott. <laughs> it's not Rupert Everett. It's the other one. I don't know. Oh, God. I can't remember his name. Oh, no. 
Anyway, the guy who's yeah. the killer. Yes, the father? The father. Yes. They reveal it's him. And who's the cop? Who is the cop? Yeah. And one of the girls goes, it's you. And he goes, yeah, of course it's me. Yeah. It's like not even they were trying to hide it at that point. It's like, yeah, we know this is lazy. Yeah. I was sort of bummed at who the killers were. It's it I, is like, the kind they of were, thing. They were so obvious the yeah. whole time that I came out of the movie being like, I didn't think it was them. And yeah. then I realized I didn't think it was them because I was like, well, that's so lazy. They wouldn't do that. I feel like they played the same trick twice because yeah. in the last one, they're like, it's always the boyfriend. And then it turned out to be the boyfriend. Yeah. And then I, this one, it was like, it's always the new guy. And it turned out to right, be the new guy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, and I feel like it's just maybe gotten in that respect a little too meta for its own good. Yeah. That's the other thing I want to talk about mm-hmm. is I don't know how you feel about Scream lore. Yes. But I feel like we're really I feel like we're a little too folding in on each other yeah, on, on ourselves a little bit too much. The singularity has yeah. been reached. It is a little too like I I don't know if like I'm pretty sure I've seen Scream 4. Mm-hmm. But I can't really remember it. And so I was like, shit, who was the killer in Scream 4 and why does it matter? And yeah. thankfully the characters talk about it right. cuz Kirby's they there and she's like, it, yeah, yeah, it was when so and so stabbed me in the gut. Um but yeah, it's it's just like a little too much to keep track of at this point. Yeah. Um, which is sort of like teaching me the the benefits of the Friday the thirteenth method or the Halloween method ish, where mm-hmm. you sort of cull, you know, you, you cut yeah. it down till only a few are really canon. Right. Or matter at all. You yeah. know, you you've got your your Tommy your your Tommy Jarvis. Thank you. Yeah. I was a Tommy Wallace. I was a different person. Mm. Um, but you have him sort of running through as a, as a thread running through a set of movies yeah. in Friday the 13th, but then he's gone and we move on. Yeah. Um, Which feels yeah. kind of like what they're doing here, except they've tied the Carpenter sisters right. into the fabric of all the other movies right. by making them related to Billy Loomis. And now yes. you've got these killers who, that's the other thing too, is this was, kind of the same climax well not yeah of, not moment to moment but it was kind of the same climax as scream 2 which i think was that they were trying to do what the most recent halloween trilogy was doing mm-hmm. where where the the 2018 halloween kind of was supposed to mirror the original halloween a little sure, bit and sure. then the second of the more recent Halloween's how is a Halloween kills. Yes. That was kind of a remake almost or a redo of Halloween two. Right. Yeah. You know, the hospital and all that. I feel like this is now trying to do the same thing. And, and, and Mindy, the one of the twins was even talking about it where she's like, we're not in a sequel. We're in like part two of a requel. Right. Um, and well, I, yeah, just... I look forward to part three sucking then, I guess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll see. I, th- I think the Scream movies have the benefit of being kind of kitschy to begin with in yeah. a way that, that some of the other these other horror movies, when people try to reboot them, are not. Yeah. You know? I, I also thought that this one was the least... Uh, I, I, think th- I think these movies are getting more meta in their yeah. own bullshit. Yeah. And less meta in a larger commentary sense. Right. You know, because the last right. one I thought did pretty well, but I kind of felt like four hits the similar notes a little bit better. Hmm. And then this one, I was kind of not really sure what they were going for. Yeah. If it was just like online stuff, but they did that yeah. in the last one and it wasn't really movie. Like they, they do, the, they have the, uh, the Mindy character has the yeah. talk about like we're in a franchise now. Yes. But that's like kind of abstract right you know right it's not talking about some sort of bigger societal trend you know there's yeah. there's not we're not having like me too movements mm-hmm. referenced in these scream movies which in a way i think is a good thing yeah I, I i think sometimes if you get too bogged down in like what what big issue is currently trendy it can get a little bit like okay we've just like forced the the veneer of like we're gonna talk yeah. about anti racism in this movie. And well, it's I like, think I cool, think, but do we need to? In I a think scream the movie? problem is that they've caught up with themselves. Yeah, because the first scream is playing off of twenty years of or fifteen years or so of horror movie tropes. 
Right. And like the last one, which came out last year, was about elevated horror, which is something that's been around for like six years or right. ten years tops. Right. And so this one, it's like, all right, we're being very specific about talking about something that we are which is something that is happening exactly at this moment in time right right whereas before it was something you were looking you were, you were maybe still slightly in but you had a history to look back on yeah, yeah and now it's kind of like all right what can we talk about between that has happened in this genre between last year and this year <laughs> right which makes me wonder what the i thought yeah. i think i saw somebody say online might have been someone on our discord yeah that um the next one should be they turn the state they the they, they talk about um limited series like tv oh. adaptations <laughs> where they, they've decided to reboot stab as a as a hulu show or something yeah it's like okay but even so the, even even so it's like i think you could do like more of a true crime thing yeah I, they I were kind of getting into really, that a yeah. bit in this one Yes and no. Yeah, because the, the the kid from the last one was so obsessed with the actual murders and stuff. Yeah. And... Yeah, I also think that like the the fact that the killers end up being the boyfriend from the last one who was a killer end up being his family, mm -hmm. and they're all so like, "You killed Richie, so we have to kill you." Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a bad motivation. Yeah. You know, like yeah. your son was psychotic. Yes. And he set up an elaborate an elaborate scenario where he got to murder a bunch of people and you think she deserves to be pun like all of you. You're all insane. Yeah. I would buy it if it was like maybe the dad and the sister. Well, that scream too was just the mom. Right. Yeah. But it, that made more sense to me right. where it was like, okay, sure, one character and then maybe if, you know, say say the I don't know which of the say the sister was the younger sibling and it was like oh, mm -hmm. okay that the sister's like buying into the craziness of what dad's saying yeah having the brother be a little bit more like ah, I don't know how fully committed to this I am would have I think been a little more interesting yeah yeah I was uh um <clears throat> when they were when they were revealing who the killers were there was a sec there was a moment where I thought before that they before they quote unquote killed off the roommate character uh-huh I, I thought, oh, what if it's the roommate and her father? And then I was like, that's very similar to Poser. Oh. Uh. But luckily it wasn't that. But. That's true. <clears throat> I do. I think the thing that annoyed me, though, was that the minute all three of them are revealed to be the, 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 the killers, they all start talking the same. Yeah, they all go. Like, they all have the same brand yeah. of crazy. They all turn into Jack Nicholson for Batman. Yes, yeah. they do. <laughs> Why is that? It's just like. What crazy no does to you. Um, no one can just be like, look, I understand this might not seem fair to you, but this is what we have to do. Right. Like nobody can be like the rational kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Where yeah. they really fully believe their bullshit and they're sort of like, you know, there's no maniacal like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, everybody just turns into like trying to do their best Billy and Stu impressions as soon as they are revealed as Ghostface. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how, I don't I don't know about you. I, I don't yeah. know how I how much i like the re the continued adventures of the ghost of billy lewis i like it more as a symbol of that there's part of sam and her subconscious mm -hmm. that relates to to him or is so scared of being like him but kind of is curious about him yeah i i like it more as like an abstract thing i think i'd almost be okay if she like heard his voice but didn't see his face mm I don't know. I'm not against it. Yeah. I, 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 I feel like there's, there's enough for me like interesting there that cause she's having like a moral dilemma mm -hmm. where she's like, this is a part of me that is violent and frightening, but it's kept me and my sister alive. So right. I need it. So I can't shut it off entirely, but I also don't want to let it rule my life. So how do I walk that line? Mm. Like, I find that kind of interesting. I think that's a lot more interesting than just like, she was such a nice and normal girl and then some psycho tried to stab her. Right, yeah. <laughs> I hope in the next one, Jenna Ortega starts seeing visions of Stu <laughs> and she's just really confused by it. It's like, what <laughs> like, is going on? You are not my dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Matthew Lillard being like, but I could have been. <laughs> yeah, I would be amazing. 
I still think they dropped the ball. They should have had Stu be the killer in the last one. They but. keep hinting. I think that's what the next one's going to end up being. Missed the shot. It had. I think <laughs> if they were going to do it, it had to be the last one because it's made sense in the last one. Well, but. they like to do it when it doesn't make sense. Though. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's probably about it. Yeah. For Scream. Yeah. I'm. I'm. It's. It is the the franchise with the best batting average. I think at this point. Yeah. Because it's. I mean, there's only six. Yep. But they're basically like five five for six basically yeah i think i think the 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 thing you can really say about it is that it's consistent yes you know you know what you're gonna get when you go into a scream movie it's gonna be this sort of cast of young people who are friends and roommates and somehow interconnected who are being stalked and picked off by one or more ghost face killers and they're trying to figure out who done it before they all end up dead Mm mm-hmm in the next one, it should be everybody except everybody except Sam should be the killer. <laughs> Even Jenna Ortega. Everyone. Everyone. Yes. It's just everybody pulling off like like a uh, in V for Vendetta when they're all in Guy yeah. Fox masks and they just pull yeah. them off. That's they've cute. never done that, have they? Where like it's Guy they, Fox Day? No, they've never done the 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 <laughs> fake out like the like the dream sequence fake out. Where oh, like in Night yeah. of the Comet where they where had the she whole has sequence. a dream within a dream. Yeah, like they've yeah. never done a thing where Sam dreams that she's being attacked and then pulls off the mask and it's her sister or something like that yeah or herself or herself that's that's the go-to <laughs> yeah it would, be, it would be herself if anybody and then she wakes up and she stabbed her sister yeah dun 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 yeah i just wrote a scream movie well there's a whole i mean that is that not a way you could go where yep. you could do the story where she thinks that she's killing people yeah. And it's actually someone who's trying to drive her nuts. And I think that would be a very believable story with what they've set up yeah. for her so far. That'd be with, cool with if how... the next one. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. We'll and probably get it in another year. It's, so It's the hunky guy from across the street. <sighs> we, no, we will him, get it in another year. Oh, we will? Is yes. it scheduled? It is already greenlit and it will begin shooting later this year. Damn, they yeah. are efficient, mm-hmm. these movies. Yeah. But uh, thank you guys for listening. That's going to do it for us for Night of the Comet and for Scream 6. Uh, If you'd like to help support the show, head over to patreon.com slash the Penske file where you can listen to us talk about films off the video nasties list this year. Uh, January we did, what was the first one we did? Was it Tenebrae? Yeah. Tenebrae? Yeah. Uh, February. Come was... on, you're gonna get a C minus on your Giallo paper at this rate. I felt I, for a second <laughs> in that movie, I felt personally attacked by that, that, that character. That is that is a line about <clears throat> that the character who's the murderer at the very beginning says. Yeah, yes. the po- the point where they had that kid. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted your uh, your exit monologue. The point where they had that kid yeah. complaining about getting a low grade on his Giallo paper <laughs> while watching Jason Takes Manhattan. With a, f- a giant last podcast yes. from the left poster in frame. I was yes. like, okay, I see what you're doing here, yeah, guys. Yeah, somebody has been uh, trawling your social mm-hmm. media feeds, Clay, and skimming the info they mm-hmm. need. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, January was Tenebrae. <laughs> February was Possession. Mm-hmm. March is uh, Flesh for Frankenstein. Cannot wait. In 3D, which will be yes. fun. Uh, so if you want to check that out, follow Trace us on Patreon. Trace Dimensiones. <laughs> But uh, uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for the support. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Clyde. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.